Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Ped. Now, if you've been tuning into the channel over the last few years, you will know that I have a little soft spot for Z cars. In fact, some of my most viewed videos are Z cars. Behind me is a Z cars imp, a Hillman imp. Originally, one of them had, oh, I don't know, 40 horsepower? That thing, 300 horsepower, and it weighs about 950 kilos. Ah, <laughs> oh, Z cars, I love their madness. So yes, let's talk Z cars. The very first Z car I had on the channel was a couple of years ago now, my mate Dave's beautiful classic mini with a Honda Civic Type R engine in the back and rear wheel drive. An absolutely astonishing car. Just made such an amazing noise very, very quick. And that video has now done well over a million views. Then last year, I had two other Z cars on the channel, two classic Fiat 500s, the Fiabusa and the Fubaru. Fiabusa having the Hayabusa bike engine and the Fubaru having a two and a half litre flat four Subaru engine, two amazing cars. The Fiabusa video has done well over a million views now as well. So when a peddler Simon got in touch and said, Ped, I've actually got a Z cars car that I think you would like to have on the channel. It's a Hillman Imp, but it's had an engine swap by Z cars. Gone is the little four cylinder, 40 odd horsepower engine that normally sits at the back of one of these. These are normally rear engined, rear wheel drive. But no, this one's got a four cylinder turbocharged Volvo engine producing about 300 horsepower. I'm like, well, we've got to get that on the channel. Now it's taken us a little bit of a while to match diaries, but finally we are here, actually exactly where we filmed the two little Fiat 500s. So let me talk to you a little bit about the car and then we'll get Simon in the car and we'll go for a drive and he can tell us even more. Uh, we're joking that the flies clearly like the white paintwork. There's loads of them around. So as I said, Hillman Imp, rear, rear engine car. So under the front of this, um, there's no kind of bonnet space really, but it is quite cool. So I'll just show you, you've got a couple of little motorsport latches here and then the whole front clamshell lifts up and you've basically got radiators or a radiator, a couple of fans, and then the fuel tank in there. So there's no kind of front stowage and all the action happens at the back, but I just think this is so cool. Absolutely awesome thing. So let's put that back and put these clips back so the bonnet doesn't fly up as we're driving along. And then wander around the back and I'll talk to you more about the engine. And one of the things that amazes me about Z cars is how they shoehorn engines into cars that have no right having an engine of that size. The engineering is always amazing. So <laughs> what craziness do we have at the back? Now let's just put into context what this car would have had originally, an 875cc four-cylinder engine with, I don't know, 40 horsepower or something, rear-wheel drive. But back in the day, they were known as brilliant little pocket rockets, rear-wheel drive, great fun to drive. But this car, <laughs> this car's had a little bit of work. So in here, and I'll kind of lift this little hatch up so we can have a look. In here is a 1.9 litre Volvo engine, actually. It's the 16 valve turbocharged unit that you would have found in something like a V40 T4. And that resonates with me because a really good friend of mine had uh, an estate V40 T4 and I, it was just a brilliant, brilliant car. I loved it. <laughs> and that was quite a big car. It was a Volvo and it had this engine and it was still quick. So God knows what it's going to be like with this engine in something that weighs 950 kilos. The other thing to point out, and this might be obvious to some, is last time I checked, a Volvo V40 had the engine at the front and it was front wheel drive. <laughs> this has the engine at the back and it's rear wheel drive. So there's a whole bunch of engineering gone in there to get this engine in the rear of the car. It's got the five speed Volvo gearbox, but clearly from there, you've got drive shafts out to the rear wheels. The other thing is you've got some you know, hosing coming in from a little um, inlet on the side window down here into the turbo. You can kind of, I can just make out the um, exhaust in the boot here, by the way, is basically exhaust. 
I'm not so sure this car is very good for going to the shops or practicality, but hey, who cares? So yeah, amazing thing. And then we've got a half cage uh, and that looks like most of the kind of engine mountings and suspension mountings and stuff are actually on that cage, which is really cool. As I said, I'll get Simon on camera very shortly to kind of explain to us exactly how to put this window down and I'll leave it like that for now. So the final things before we jump in and have a look on the inside is how much of the outside is imp? The most standout feature for this, when I pulled up to it this morning, when you approach it from the rear, um, that rear bulge in the wing <laughs> is there to house a huge set of rear tires. So it's got this fantastic bulging and then it's the same on the front wings as well. And it just gives the car such a cool stance. I think probably the only bits of original limp might be the kind of roof line and around the doors, but certainly all of these wings and so on are very non-standard. Now, let's have a quick look on the inside and then I'm busting to take this car up the road for a drive. <laughs> it's very cool in here now, slight porky pie. I said it was a half cage, it's not, it's a full cage. And it's almost like a, I mean, the cage actually extends out the front as well. And a lot of the mountings of where we saw the radiators, the cage goes all the way. So yeah, it, it is a full cage. It is basically a racing car in here. Two lovely Sparco bucket seats, six point racing harnesses. It's got a digital racing uh, dash, very cool Sparco steering wheel. These buttons are very kind of Caterham-esque actually, with a nice um, cutoff switch and engine start. And it's all very cool. I noticed the brake servos where the passenger's feet would be as well. But yeah, no creature comforts in here. Can't see a radio. Can't see any air conditioning. But what I can see is a whole bunch of fun. So I think we get some cameras set up. Uh, not quite sure where they're going to go. <laughs> and then we get Simon in the car to talk to us more about this absolutely epic imp. And let me take you for a drive. <laughs> I think I'm going to need these seat belts, don't you? Hey, now then, YouTube. Welcome to Simon. Hello. Welcome to the channel, dude. Thank, Thank you for having me. Don't you just love tight cars with harnesses? With harnesses. She's on. She's on. She's on. So, talk to me about this car, dude. So. The concept of putting... The only problem is getting the handbrake off. <laughs> you need right, to be a contortionist, don't you? So them, your guns are too big, mate, to be fair. Um, so the concept of putting a 300 horsepower turbocharged engine in a car that weighs 950 kilos is a bit insane, really. It certainly is. I, I love it. It wasn't my idea, but no, we'll go with it. So how did you get the car? So, and how long have you had it to start with? So I've had it a couple of years now. Yeah. Um, it was a, 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 a post-lockdown lockdown, uh, whim, as it were. So most people went out and bought a puppy. Yeah. You bought a 300 horsepower rear-engine. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so it was um, owned by a guy in the Imp Club. Yeah. And he was phoned one day saying, I want to buy your car. Yeah. And he named a price, and a, a lorry turned up and collected it, and it appeared on one of these win your, you know, win a car competitions. Right. Okay. The guy that won it was a young guy um, who w wanted to deposit for a house. Yeah. Couldn't really insure it, yeah. so it went up on sale, and of course I went to look for at it, and uh, the rest was history. <laughs> I mean, this is not my first him. Um, I had one as my first car, but obviously with an 875cc engine in. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a must, I would have thought. 
And then what's the weight balance like? Because it's not a great deal at the front, is it? So, so, so when I got it weighed, uh, it's basically 60 rear, 40 front, um, okay. fully fully fueled. Yeah. Obviously, as the fuel goes down, we'll be front gets yeah. from lighter, lighter. But that, that's a common problem with, with a lot of rear engine cars. Like that. that, that is never going to bore. Get up because that was a VTEC. You need to get it above six to really let it fly. 
uh, well, that was just terrifying. Oh, but they look, they look good. Oh, it was good, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, oh, but this has got quite a nice wheelbase for the power as yeah, well. Yeah. It's not too short, although yeah. it is obviously a small car. Yeah. But I think, yeah. So yeah, so it's a, it's a good, fun, uh, you know, Sunday morning blast of a car. Uh, longer distances, you know, I wear my uh, he headphones. Yeah. videos and people never believe me. We're not actually going that fast. Not at all. We're yeah, within, it, within the speed limit. It feels like we're doing a billion miles an hour.